Hey everyone, and welcome back to Scandalous Media. It's Alana here. With the increasing buzz of a possible Benefer divorce hitting the news, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez proved that if it didn't work out in your 30s, doesn't mean it's gonna work out in your 50s. I'm not just saying this to be a hater or anything, but you know when people put too much pressure trying to figure out why the relationship didn't work, with excuses such as the timing wasn't right, or we were too young figuring life out, and the reality is, no, you're just not good together. People do this to each other and celebrities all the time, and with the increase of failed Hollywood couples, simply not being good together is a valid point. When JLo and Ben got back together, more than two decades after breaking up, it gave people the idea that true love wins in the end. That whatever was meant for you will come to you. But with JLo and Ben, it seems as if it's just not meant to be. After getting back together and even getting married this time around, we see the media games being played from both sides, Ben looking miserable catering to JLo, JLo being the usual insufferable diva she is, what are you wearing tonight? and so much more. This couple's drama stems back all the way 20 years ago, and you're gonna wanna be seated for this. Make sure to like and subscribe, tell us down below your thoughts about Ben and Jennifer, and let us know what other deep dive videos you wanna see us do next. The Early Days Ben and Jennifer first met in 2001 on the set of their movie, Geely. The movie flopped badly, but sparks flew between Ben and Jennifer. At the time, Jennifer was still married to her second husband, Chris Judd, and after her divorce from Chris, she and Ben went public with their relationship. In 2002, Ben made a cameo in JLo's Jenny from the Block music video. The video made a tongue-in-cheek reference to the tabloid's obsession with their relationship, including showing surveillance camera footage and paparazzi photos of the two. In November 2002, they got engaged. The tabloids were going crazy trying to get every shot of the two and figuring out everything about said wedding. It's safe to say that Ben and JLo play the we don't want media attention game, but they both loved the attention. This was also at the start of tabloid and media culture, and they were at the peak of their careers, which is a thrill I'm sure Jennifer still dreams about to this day. Ben proposed with a 6.1 carat pink diamond that reportedly cost $2.5 million. Now let's take a small intermission to talk about what was going on behind closed doors during this time. I had a source speak out to me in 2022 about Ben and JLo, and I made a post about it on my blog, Scandalous Media. The source told me that during this time, Ben was almost going broke trying to please Jennifer with gifts and constantly going above and beyond for her to make her happy. Before she and Ben were serious, she was seen spending a lot of time with P. Diddy. And yes, the same P. Diddy who the feds raided his house earlier this year and is currently getting exposed for horrendous crimes. Anyway, that Diddy, and he had much more money than Ben, so it felt like a competition. It was a competition of who can shower her with the most gifts, and while Ben was notorious for being a playboy douche actor who had girls throw themselves at him, Jayla was the only girl he was chasing and making an effort to keep. She was the only girl he was willing to change for. At the peak of his acting career, he was partying all the time, hooking up with anyone he wanted to, and was clearly full of himself. It does usually take a girl like Jayla to snap you out of your bubble, which is what happened with Ben. Now back to the public point of view, they get engaged and later star in a film together in 2003 named Jersey Girl, which was a drama that also underperformed at the box office, grossing only $36 million. In September 2003, they postponed their wedding, releasing a joint statement saying, Due to the excessive media attention surrounding our wedding, we have decided to postpone the date. When we found ourselves seriously contemplating hiring three separate decoy brides at three different locations, we realized that something was awry. We began to feel that the spirit of what would have been the happiest day of our lives could be compromised. We felt what should have been a joyful and sacred day could be spoiled for us, our families, and our friends. Is that so? This statement has Jennifer's name all over it because only someone that self-obsessed would blame the media attention on why they felt the need to postpone their wedding. Clearly postponing didn't do them any good, seeing as they broke up a few months later in 2004. This statement does a very good job at showing how important they both thought they were. More JLo than Ben, as we can see now with how she is extremely disliked because she's such a huge diva, but the entire, and we hired three different decoy brides for three different locations, like, come on, you were nowhere near that famous. I used to live here. What? I used to live here. My name is Jennifer. Cool. Jennifer Lopez. Who's Jennifer Lopez? Me. I used to live here. 
few months later, in June of 2004, JLo moved on and married Mark Anthony, and the two welcomed twins in 2008 before separating in 2014. In 2005, Ben married Jennifer Garner and they had three children together before divorcing in 2018. From their very first ever spotting to their last, Jennifer has spoken about her relationship with Ben multiple times in those years. Reflecting on him being her first heartbreak, to the sad realities of not wanting to believe who a person really is, to mentioning him in her 2015 memoir, and so on. JLo opens up about meeting Mark three days after she should have been at the altar saying I do to Ben in her 2014 book, True Love. This was a wild thing to admit, and I feel like she did it for shock factor, because you meant to tell me that you met your future husband three days after the scheduled date when you were supposed to marry Ben Affleck? She ends up saying that her romance with Mark may have been her attempt at a quick fix for her heartbreak with Ben. She said this in 2014, and I don't know, I don't think I would like to be with someone who publicly just said they got with me as a quick fix and would constantly push back that idea when it came to their mind. The Reunion After almost two decades of not seeing each other, they reunited in April 2021. JLo ended her engagement to Alex Rodriguez and Ben split up with Anna de Armas after the two were spotted hanging out. Alex and Jennifer broke up after he cheated on her with Southern Charm star Madison LeCroy. After the cheating scandal went viral on social media, both Alex and Jennifer were still seen together, giving the idea that everything was fine and the news of the cheating was false. Now let's take a small intermission to go behind the scenes again. The same source who I spoke to for my blog ended up saying that Jennifer wanted the fall down to come with grace, and it killed her that Alex cheated on her with someone who was nowhere near her level. It seems like she was more insulted that he cheated with a D-lister rather than the fact that he cheated at all. JLo is a possible narcissist, and I say possible knowing she probably is, just because we don't have her medical records and we aren't her psychiatrists, but a traditional narcissist would be insulted at the fact that a person they're hanging out with is spending their free time with people below their standards. Alex and JLo didn't just break up over the cheating scandal, their relationship was going downhill for several reasons, including A-Rod's financial habits and status. So it wasn't just the cheating scandal and the fact that Jennifer didn't like the part that went viral was her name tied to some D-list star. Before Ben got with JLo, he was spending his time with Anna de Armas, aka his co-star. This was a textbook definition of a PR relationship. It was so textbook that it had no substance or value. I genuinely cannot think of anyone who has cared about these two. The relationship lacked emotion, and they looked like co-workers hanging out because they had to, not because they wanted to. Ben and Anna were a 100% a fake relationship. They, more specifically Anna, were one of the thirstier celebs. The pandemic and lockdown could not even stop them from getting their pop shots. Several of my media connections who work in high-profile publications confirmed to me that Ben and Anna were PR for their upcoming movie, and that everyone involved, even the paparazzi, knew it. Like I said, just because you're in a PR relationship doesn't mean you get the right to make it stale, give the audience a show. And the interesting thing about Ben is that he'll do things for attention and be on board with it, but then get annoyed after he gets the attention he asked for. So when things crumbled on Alex and Jennifer and the media trolled the PR that was Ben and Anna, JLo knew that if she gave Ben a call, he'd be willing to see her. It's not like either of them had anything to lose by seeing each other again, and I do admit that when they got back together, the media loved it and it was a big deal. It was kind of on the same level as Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt possibly getting back together, or dare I say it, Justin and Selena. You know those heartthrob turned toxic couples that everyone just loves to force together? Them getting back together actually shows a good example of the fate that other couples who broke up and were dearly missed would have had, had they got back together 10 or 20 years later. I feel like Ben and JLo are a good example of how things would have been for Justin and Selena had they reunited 20 years later and tried to give it a shot again. Some things are just meant to stay in the past. Modern Day Dynamic Just like Jennifer ran Ben in the early 2000s, she still runs him now. I'm not sure why he thought this time around would be different because he looks completely drained anytime he is near her. Even though Ben and Jennifer's dynamic isn't PR and it's real in some aspects, it is orchestrated and fueled by Jennifer's obsession with attention. She's always giving out information to the press and she paints the story that she wants out there. We saw it earlier in this video when she kept having press conversations about her relationship with Ben, even after the relationship was over. How he was somehow a memory to her marriage with Mark, what her first impression of him was, how the tabloids treated them as a couple, and so on. <laughs> it's about 
Ben. It's about Ben. Out. You said that was your first first real heartbreak. It was. It was my first big heartbreak. Yeah. Like I so Ben Affleck, when you saw that you were going to be in their space, were you like awkward? No. I, I even for Ben and you. No. 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 We talk and you know we we. Email, more email than anything. So you guys are on really good terms yeah. and all that. Yes, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for you. This is a great thing, so. I'm so happy for him. You know, we went through a really rough time in the press and things like that back in the day, and so I really felt like, wow, this is an amazing. For example, she claimed that Benifer reconnected when she received an email from Ben after he provided a quote to InStyle about her. He told her that he provided a rave and they continued talking, then ultimately started visiting each other at home. Even though I've heard from many different people that Jennifer's the one who initiated the reunion. Also, Ben seems completely out of the game, he's in his 50s, he's practically been in the business for 40 years now, and he just seems so out of shape of continuously chasing fame. That being said, he'll agree to do things for attention for sure. He's still showing up to red carpets and doing his part, but you can't help but see how tired he looks doing it. He's extremely annoyed with Jennifer at almost every moment together, especially as of late. This is why I wholeheartedly believe Jennifer was the one who initiated the reunion, because her love for attention is so deep and she holds herself to such an incredibly high standard that only another narcissist could compete with her. With your 2023 Women of the Year, my 2023 Woman of the Year. Ooh. I think my Woman of the Year. Hmm. <laughs> Hi, Bo. I'm Jennifer Lopez, and I'm here. I'm the host. Welcome to my party. <laughs> she looks down on everyone, and her relationship with Ben is giving her more attention than her relationship with Mark or Alex ever did. And it's because they both tugged on that nostalgia, and you want to keep up with them because it gives you that glimpse of the early 2000s when they were an it couple. And this generation loves romanticizing the past. You can see the annoyance on their faces more present in Ben's during paparazzi outings. Jennifer looks like she plans the paparazzi outings because she's always camera ready in fancy little outfits, and Ben is next to her looking like he wishes he could evaporate off this earth. She runs and controls him. It's obvious to see even from a screen. And he lets her because one, you do not want to fight with JLo. Whoever's around me right there, you feel me. But I'm also saying that the camera got it. Because <laughs> I can do all of that at the same time. Yeah. And two, a huge part of it was because she made a mark on him. Like I said, back in the day, Ben was a huge playboy. He was not the guy you're gonna settle down with, he was literally boozing it up and probably doing all sorts of drugs. But the only person he was willing to change for was Jennifer. He was head over heels for her when they first got together in the early 2000s. He reportedly almost went bankrupt trying to keep her happy with all the gifts and chasing he was doing. So I'm guessing nostalgia and good times have taken their toll on Ben since they got back together, but only for it to possibly end in more disaster than the last time. They were spotted in May 2021 jetting off to Montana together for a weekend-long vacation. A source, probably JLo herself, told E! News they really care for each other and they picked up right where they left off. Jennifer spent several days with Ben out of town, they have a strong connection. It's all been quick and intense, but Jennifer is happy. Do you notice how the source seems to be coming from JLo's camp since they're mainly talking about her? A few days later, another source said that Ben and Jennifer seemed committed to each other and saying, Jennifer is doing well. She seems very happy and excited about her future. For the majority of summer 2021, sources tell different magazines about their relationship. One day it's they're talking about the future, another day it's their families are getting along great, then it's they're moving in together or Ben's looking at engagement rings and so on. A year after reuniting, Ben and JLo announced their engagement. Again, most of these announcements are coming from JLo. It's always her talking about Ben or her team talking about their relationship. She's the one who announced their engagement in an exclusive video published in her personal fan newsletter. So I have a really um, exciting <laughs> and special story to share. Um, this one's definitely I told you I had a special, very personal story to tell that I want to share here. Um, I'm engaged! <laughs> 
She's the one who went into detail about how Ben proposed by saying, Did you ever imagine your biggest dream could come true? Saturday night, while at my favorite place on earth, in the bubble bath, my beautiful love got on one knee and proposed. I was taken totally off guard and just looked in his eyes, smiling and crying at the same time, trying hard to get my head around the fact that after 20 years, this was happening all over again. I was quite literally speechless and he said, Is that a yes? I said, Yes, of course that's a yes. Cute except for the fact that we are reporting about a possible divorce coming very soon. They get married in July in Vegas, with, once again, Jennifer telling us the exclusive news in her newsletter on the JLo, saying that it was a low-key ceremony. Then she confirmed that she changed her last name to match Ben, and then shared a photo of her in bed with her wedding band. Again, nothing is coming out of Ben's mouth. It's JLo showing photos, writing detailed captions, and if it's not her directly, it's obvious it's her team sending paparazzi to capture them walking during their Paris honeymoon or sending in tips about how happy the two are. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Ben doesn't know about these orchestrated pop walks and attention-seeking behavior on Jen's part that also benefits him, but I do see that the majority of the public effort does come from her part. For a while, they're just enjoying themselves in the press. They have their second wedding in Georgia, where they go on their second honeymoon in Italy. This is where we get a video of Ben preaching in an unhinged way with his hands in the air. If there weren't photos of him showing JLo pics of them at their wedding, everyone would have thought they were having a fight. For a few months after that, we were just getting random updates about them here and there. They seemed pretty happy, but you could tell they did a lot of things for attention when it came to this relationship, especially JLo who was always primed and ready to go for the camera, and behind her is Ben looking like he just woke up and was forced to go outside. After all, it was JLo who released an entire self-funded movie and documentary called This Is Me Now, and it was followed up with a This Is Me Now behind-the-scenes documentary called The Greatest Love Story Never Told. And the only thing these two films brought out were hilarious moments of Ben low-key dragging JLo. Age 28, when she was in the mansion, but exhausted. This is me using some of my story. Uh -huh. Semi-autobiographical. It's your story, but younger. Jaylo's messy hair reminding her of when she was young and running up and down the block. I like taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block. Whatever that means. More than 10 celebrities who failed to make a cameo in the film. Taylor Swift is a no. Jason Momoa is not available. Um, Jennifer Coolidge, not available. Lizzo, not available. So he's doing Succession 2 and The Lion King. And Star Wars and or two, he's not necessarily available. He's not available, but he does. Do you want Vanessa Hutchins, by the way? I was thinking about that. She's not available. Oh, never mind. It'd be good to get Bad Bunny to do a little cameo as the bad kid. Oh, the wrong again. That would be good. Ariana Grande's unavailable. She's in London until September. Snoop's not available, unfortunately. I don't want to force anybody to do this who doesn't go, this is going to be fun. Nobody wants to say no to me, Benny. I, I, I get that. But when an actor doesn't like a script or doesn't think it's good enough or is worried about it, that's what they'll say. And the alleged chopped cheese Jayla was getting from the bodega. My go-to order at the bodega was ham and cheese on a roll, with an orange drink, if you know, you know, and a small bag of chips. The reason why I'm a big believer in Jennifer chasing things for attention and it not being so much Ben is because Jennifer is still doing things to show that she still has the grit for it. For example, her This Is Me Now tour literally got canceled because of low ticket sales, but instead of Jennifer doing things to kind of make the tour work, she was insistent on booking out venues that she was not selling. Not only was she trying to book venues that she couldn't sell out, she also had crazy ticket prices, with seats all the way in the nosebleeds being almost $200, $300. I did a little deep dive into the ticket prices for JLo's show, because I'm like, why are her shows being canceled? And check this out, $300 for section 200, and so many of her fans had argued that if the tickets were cheaper, maybe they'd be able to go, or if she was just at least playing in smaller venues, she'd be able to fulfill the continuation of the tour. But JLo and her team still stayed on booking bigger venues that they couldn't sell out, and therefore there was low ticket sales and they had to cancel the tour. Hold up, Jennifer Lopez won $7,000 a ticket? What happened to JLo? Somebody told her that she was just super amazing and she took that ran to the moon with it. And she is amazing, absolutely. 
$7,000 a ticket, Jennifer Lopez, girl. Now this is her show in Miami, and it's this specific section right here called VIP A. And yes, the tickets are $6,420, but there's a kicker. Now this VIP A section seen here can only be purchased if you buy two tickets. If you only wanted to buy one ticket, that section is no longer available. So in order to get into VIP A or VIP B, you'd have to purchase at minimum two tickets. JLo even tried to pull a Taylor Swift by making it her Evers tour, calling it the greatest hits tour. And while the rebrand did help sell tickets, it clearly wasn't enough, or at least as enough to sell out the bigger venues. So eventually it was canceled and Jennifer blamed it on spending time with family and friends, which literally makes no sense. If you're an artist preparing to go on tour, you're not going to cancel it for no reason. And you're definitely not going to cancel it because you're gonna spend time with family and friends. I do see Jennifer's team kind of using the Benefer divorce as an explanation for why she couldn't go on tour, just because I don't think their egos can handle the fact that it was literally just low ticket sales. I'd rather her go back to the block. <laughs> Benefer's downfall, public fights, and divorce rumors. They make their Grammys debut in February 2023, where we get a hilarious sight of JLo and Ben, and it's everything you need to know about these two. Ben looks like he couldn't have been more bored at the Grammys, while JLo made sure to be camera ready, dancing and having a good time. Well, camera ready, except for this one time, where they both look like they didn't notice that the camera was getting them, and they both look like they got caught mid-fight. Ben whispers something in Jen's ear, and she jumps up and hits his chest, and then they both stare dead at the camera. After the moment went viral, Ben spoke out saying he was trying to avoid being on camera for a skit with host Trevor Noah. He says, They were framing us in the shot, but I didn't know they were rolling. I leaned into her and I was like, as soon as they start rolling, I'm going to slide away from you and leave you sitting next to Trevor. She goes, You better not leave. That's a husband and wife thing. The funniest part about this is that I almost believe him, but I know that his team is trying to play it off as a joke. But the context of their conversation could be that they weren't joking with each other, and she did in fact tell him to sit down and pose, because afterwards he sits up straight, and that's when they both look slightly shocked that the camera is rolling. Again, this proves the point that Ben is ready to clock out and go home, while JLo loves the glitz and glamour of her life, continuously appearing on red carpets with or without Ben. What are you wearing tonight? The only time Ben looked happy the whole night was when he saw fellow actor Adrian Brody. The funny thing about Ben Affleck is that he always looks stressed, out of it, exhausted, or just bored. It's like life has really run its toll on him, and I can't help but laugh because he constantly looks exhausted and goes viral for it. This is me content. <laughs> that's how I, this is me amused. <laughs> I I, that's something. how God made me. A few months later in May, we get this photo where it looks like Ben and Jennifer were fighting on the red carpet. I'm not sure what could guarantee a face like this from Ben unless he is angry, but a lip reader clarified to the media that they weren't having an argument and said that Jennifer was asking Ben if her low-cut top was showing too much, pushing him to say it looked fine. After finding the right pose, he told her to get closer saying, don't worry babe, and she says, come close to me. Afterwards, he tells her he'll meet up with her later, but it's hilarious how out of context this picture is. Honestly, without video proof, you'd never convince me it wasn't a fight mid-red carpet moment. A video though that can't be proven otherwise is Ben's annoyance with opening the door for Jennifer, which leads him to slam it shut with an attitude, followed up with a death stare at the camera that seemed to have surprised him. Have a good day. Thank you, got it. Someone said he didn't even look at Jennifer as she was getting into the car. They were definitely fighting. The video went viral as most Benefer angry moments do, and people said he looked miserable and severely stressed. Not to be that person, but I have a hard time blaming Ben constantly looking miserable on him being stressed. I'm pretty sure the average American would have a more stressed day than an already successful Ben Affleck. My personal opinion is that Ben isn't cut out for the constant attention that comes with being famous, and he's dating one of the biggest attention seekers out there. You're obviously going to look miserable compared to your partner who makes sure to always look put together. The luck for Benefer continued running out as someone filmed him having an argument in his car a day after they went viral for Ben slamming the car door shut. The tourists who snapped their pictures told the media that it was pretty clear that Ben looked frustrated or irritated while Jennifer looked calm and sad. There was a lot of hand gestures and it looked like it was a heated argument from his part. The source also says that they were so deep in conversation that they didn't notice someone taking pictures of them. This literally happened at a red light. You know how small the chances are of catching an A-list celebrity couple fighting on a red light? Quite small.
Things slowed down a bit for Ben and Jennifer in the media until almost a year later on May 16, 2024, where there were reports that Ben is staying at a separate house away from Jennifer after rumors of a divorce. He was seen riding his sports car on Thursday, May 16th, in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles where he's been reportedly staying. As he dangled his arm out of the car, you can see that he was still wearing his wedding ring, but that wasn't enough to put the rumors to rest, especially when he's been staying at this house over the past week or so and his ex-wife Jennifer Garner lives nearby. This also comes after Jennifer notably attended the Met Gala by herself, but was seen later photographed with her wedding ring. Later that day, she liked an Instagram post detailing the qualities of a partner that could lead to an unhealthy relationship. The post explained that you cannot build a healthy relationship with someone who lacks integrity and emotional safety, doesn't respect your time, lacks communication skills, and doesn't have a strong sense of self. A source then told Us Weekly that Jen and Ben are having issues in their marriage. They started having issues a few months ago as Jen has been ramping up work commitments and preparing for her tour. They are on completely two different pages most of the time. An insider tells In Touch that the duo are in couples therapy in an attempt to work out their issues, even though he hates the whole humiliating process. The source explains that everything is a fight between Ben and Jennifer, but they have a strong passion and respect for each other and want to work things out. This kind of proves all the public moments I just listed where they were caught tense and annoyed that they were indeed fighting. Following rumors of their divorce and not being photographed together in nearly two months, the duo make an appearance. He was seen picking up Jennifer and her kid Emmy outside of a school where Ben's 15-year-old daughter Serafina had been performing in a play. Is it just me or does Jennifer look like she's holding the pose for the cameras? They later attended a movie event and made their way to Soho on May 19th and Ben was looking as broody as usual where he appeared frustrated at someone, maybe the paparazzi, while Jennifer looked straight into the camera. They made sure to make a point by wearing their wedding rings after because before their outing, Ben spent a few days not wearing his ring for the first time in two years. He was not wearing his ring on Friday and Saturday, May 17th and 18th, but then put it back on later on Saturday as he returned to his $100,000 a month rental home that he's been staying of as of late. Jen isn't playing any ring games as she was seen wearing it on the 14th and hasn't been photographed without it yet. Ben was photographed taking a call on Sunday where his phone screen shows that he has Jennifer saved as Jennifer Affleck with a photo of her. And she's sitting right next to him too. How that is, I have no idea, but interesting. This makes me wonder, why is she calling him if she's sitting right next to him? And why is he basically showing the paparazzi? Do you think this is Jennifer's attempt to try and salvage the divorce rumors while Ben clearly doesn't care with his broody ring off self? The latest in the saga is a source telling Page Six that if there was a way to divorce on grounds of temporary insanity, he would. He feels like the last two years was just a fever dream and he's come to his senses now and understands that there's just no way this is going to work. That quote is so heads on because Ben looks like he's been living his life as a fever dream and it goes back to my point about the two clashing in personalities. I've had people tell me behind closed doors that Jennifer is a control freak and forces him to do pop walks with her and if the shot isn't right they'll even do a walk multiple times. I guess paparazzi games are fun when you're 23 and you've only been famous for like three years, but can you imagine living majority of your life in front of a camera putting on a show on screen and off screen and now you're in your 50s exhausted but you still have to play media games and if not get yelled at by your wife. I'm in no way sympathizing with him because he knew who he was marrying but I've yet to hear of a good story when it comes to Jennifer Lopez. Let me tell y'all about the time that I met J-Lo and she was one of the rudest people I ever met in my life. It looks like everybody's being honest about J-Lo, so I figured I'd join the train. Um, Thank you, Jennifer. Um, one time I was serving her and she literally would not look at me. She ordered ginger ale through her manager and then her manager told me. I heard her. And she is just so in love with herself and in love with the movie she made that everyone told her not to make, that she made a documentary about that movie that everyone told her not to make. What movie was that? So I can only imagine how much of a diva she really is behind closed doors. If the general public alone has already gathered up so many stories of her being completely rude and entitled, which is resulting in so many people disliking her as of now. I was like, can I get you anything? And she was like, a ginger ale. And then her manager was like, can you get her a ginger ale? And. She didn't tip. Speaking of JLo being rude in public, let's talk about how angry she got at someone who confronted her about the divorce rumors when she was in Mexico doing press for her new film. She was in Mexico City to promote her new Netflix film, Atlas, where she attended a panel discussion for the movie alongside her co-star, Simo Liu. When asked about her relationship, both JLo and Simo Liu responded defensively, saying, Yo, Steve, Arthur, Ben Affleck, he's real. <laughs> okay, we're not doing that. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know better than that.
They were both obviously not having it. Then her co-star went on a rant to defend J.Lo by saying that Jennifer's a producer on the movie and it's the reason why he's on the movie because she cares about representation, diversity, she's an icon, a boss, a creative that we should celebrate, and all that nonsense that just went to her head. Jen is a producer on this movie yes. and the reason why I'm here and the reason why Sterling was in this beautiful movie is because Jen cares and Jen cares about things like representation and diversity and she's a boss. But okay. <laughs> Although that doesn't answer the question if Benifer got a divorce or not, they were then spotted when Ben picked her up outside of a theater after a family gathering in Los Angeles. People weren't amused with Jennifer's response, arguing that she made her relationship very public and it was part of her brand at some point, so she can't back down now. People were also not amused at how she talked down to the person, responding back in a condescending tone and saying, You know better than that. I mean, you only made your entire relationship a huge part of your brand, even using the family time excuse on why you canceled your tour, even though we all know it was because of low ticket sales. Ben and Jennifer continued trying to prove the public narrative wrong and fighting off divorce rumors when they were out and about with Ben's mom Chris in Santa Monica on Sunday. They were seen having this awkward air kiss situation, it was noted that they were opting for no real physical contact, and it felt performative. They were walking arm in arm for a second or two, but then there wasn't really much contact between them. And with Ben's mom hanging out with them, it clearly wasn't some kind of romantic time together. It seems as if more time passes by, these two get more and more awkward in front of the cameras, and now with Benifer no longer living together, it seems as if it's only downhill from here. Reports have now started to say that Ben and JLo are selling the $60 million home that they bought when they got married. It shouldn't be too long till we get another update on these two, and we'll definitely keep you guys updated on TikTok, where we have been consistently updating on this story, same day as news continues to drop, so make sure to keep an eye out for those videos. We will make a part 2 to this video as the story continues to build up, so be on the lookout for that, and make sure to turn our post notifications on, like and subscribe for more, follow us on our social medias, tell us your thoughts down below, do you think Benifer will survive, or will history repeat itself down the line? Thanks, and I'll see you next time!